This is Dr. Terry Mortensen. He's an anti-science evangelist with a PhD in history of geology, which he uses to trick his gullible audience into believing he has an actual science degree, so he can pretend to be an expert on the subject of geology, and therefore qualify to speak as an authority on biology. Yeah. Now, I mentioned that the evolutionists do have some fossil evidence uh, that they put forth for evolution. It's rare. No, it isn't. This comment is based on a reworded and distorted quote from Stephen Jay Gould referenced earlier in the video. In Stephen Jay Gould's own words, he said, quote, It is infuriating to be quoted time and again by creationists, whether through design or stupidity, I don't know, as admitting that the fossil record includes no transitional forms. Transitional forms are generally lacking at the species level, but they are abundant between larger groups. But uh, here's one of the evidences. Phil Gingrich writing in the Journal for Geological Education, a journal for science teachers. He had this picture of this creature that looked like a transitional form between a land animal and a whale. Uh, evolutionists believe that la whales evolved from land animals. And you can see that it is on its way to becoming a whale. Its rear end is definitely moving in that direction. It's already on a fish diet. The front legs are still land animal, though. Okay, now, now get a load of this. I want you to be aware of neuro-linguistic programming here. Does this picture look like this? Or this? Or this? What Mortensen is doing here is trying to get you to associate an outdated and tentative artist's rendering with looking like whales, even though no one ever suggested that early land-based progenitors of whales should look like modern whales. And the artistic rendering looks nothing like whales either. Does it? Why should it? What was the fossil evidence for Phil Gingrich uh, to have his artist draw this? Well, he tells us it was the head. No, it was not the head. It was just the stippled parts of the skull. He had no fossil evidence at this time below the neck. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it difficult to see how you can take that piece of bone and that piece of bone and then tell me what the front legs looked like and what the rear end looked like. This is classic misdirection. He intentionally ignores everything that the tentative original illustration got right and tries to get his audience to concentrate only on the details it got wrong. For instance, there's the fact that scientists knew it had legs to begin with, and the fact, of course, that scientists knew that it would be turn out to be a wolf-like or dog-like animal, which is what ended up being the case. One of the key facts is that Pachycetus was discovered to have an auditory bulla known as a sigmoid process. This is a diagnostic characteristic of modern whales. In other words, it's shared by all members of the order Cetacea and only by them. Having four limbs, a characteristic of typical tetrapods, and a trait exclusive of the now legless modern order Cetacea is exactly what defines Pachycetus as a transitional form. It's just a bonus that it's also in the exact chronological placement between the earlier Mycenaeans and the later Mysticetes. Without evolution, none of this would make any sense, but evolution, of course, makes sense of all of it. Another key point that Mortensen leaves out is that for over a hundred years there was a total dearth of transitional fossils linking land animals to whales, but when Pachycetus was discovered, we knew where to look. And today, they are in abundance. But it gets worse. This isn't the picture published in that article in the Journal of uh, Geological Education. This is. What Mortensen has done here is to provide two different sources for two parts of the exact same picture so that he could pretend scientists were hiding the actual evidence of what was originally found from the journal. How dishonest is this? But Phil Gingrich said about this creature, which he called Pachycetus, which means whale from Pakistan, which is where the fossil was found. In time and in its morphology, Pachycetus is perfectly intermediate, a missing link between earlier land mammals and later full-fledged whales. Well, now that article was written in 1994, but they found some more fossils after 1994. And... Uh, in a technical article in the British journal Nature, which is the world's leading English language technical science journal, uh, there was an article in 2001 about Pachycetus and all the fossil evidence they had found since 1994. And uh, this was the evidence. Looks a lot like a whale to me, doesn't it? 
I don't know what it looks like to you. But again, this is irrelevant because no biologist ever suggested that the land-based progenitors of whales should look like modern whales. How could they? We aren't talking about some small-scale species-to-species transitions. We're talking about a massive evolutionary overhaul that took place over 50 million years. Why do creationists always forget that evolution has to do with change over time only when it's convenient for their argument? And uh, by our study of anatomy, the scientists can guess pretty well what this creature looked like when it was alive. And they said these were terrestrial mammals, that is land-based mammals, no more amphibious than a tapir. Does anybody else notice these two statements don't conflict in any way? As I said before, the combination of land animal and whale traits are exactly what defined Pachycetus as transitional. Gingrich and company knew it was a four-legged animal before its limbs were discovered and in spite of the fact that it expressed characteristics exclusive in modern days of whales. If Mortensen had actually read the article, The Whales of Tethys, that he cites here, he would know he was giving a false impression because the paragraph directly previous to the paragraph he mined that quote from Gingrich said, quote, we later speculated that this dog-sized whale first entered Tethys Ocean from its riverside home. And from the same article earlier referenced in the uh, Journal of Geological Education, 1983, quote, functional morphology and mode of occurrence of the fossils indicate that Pachycetus was a not yet fully adapted for a, an aquatic existence but it probably entered the shallow remnants of eastern Tethys to feed on abundant planktivorous fishes. So Gingrich was never saying that Pachycetus was fully aquatic and actually posited that its home was on land. Also, Mortensen is caught cheating here once again because he cherry-picked the two illustrations of Pachycetus that were the most obviously different, ignoring the many other renderings which were more closely resemblant of the modern-day under, modern understanding of this fossil like this one from 1983, almost two decades before the nearly complete skeleton was found. Kind of like a pig. I don't know if you've been down to the ocean side recently, but uh, I haven't seen any pigs swimming in the ocean recently. Okay, so a taper is kind of like a pig. So that means that a pig swims like a taper. Let's see if we can apply this logic somewhere else. A pencil is kind of like a pen. Therefore, pencils use ink. Brilliant. And by the way, since when did no more amphibious than mean not amphibious at all? But we'll get back to that. So this is a case of misinterpreted fossil evidence jumping to conclusions on the basis of very skimpy evidence. And the evolutionists in the last hundred years have done this over and over again. Actually, as I've shown, it's a case of scientists making overall accurate predictions where a few details were later found to be inaccurate and thus revised in the light of new data. In other words, science happened. The scientists predicted its dog-like size, predicted its home was on land, predicted it had four legs, and predicted where we should find new transitional forms in light of the discovery of Pachycetus, which itself was a prediction of science. But, in the first tentative illustration of Pachycetus, they got the leg length wrong. So in reality, it's just another example of creationist quote miners dishonestly mischaracterizing science, its history, and discoveries to suit the agenda of anti-science evangelism. And over the last hundred years or so, they actually have done this time and time and time and time and time and time again. And Terry Mortensen obviously has no idea what he's talking about at any point.